Now we're going to make a uh, pepita brittle. Pepita is the uh, Mexican term for the inside seed of a pumpkin seed. The best thing to do is to go and buy them already shelled. It's a lot of work, so go ahead and go to your local uh, Asian or Latino market and pick up some pepitas. It's dirt cheap and they're really fantastic snacks. So the main thing to remember with a brittle is that you have to cook it to very certain temperatures. Um, those temperatures correspond with um, the degree of cooking for the sugar. So first and foremost, you need to make sure that you have a candy thermometer. The other thing to remember is to have everything measured out ahead of time. If you're measuring it out while you're cooking the sugar, you're gonna lose. And the way you're gonna lose is by burning the sugar. So it's really important to have all of this measured out ahead of time so it's very quick and easy for you to grab. We've gone ahead and put into a pot some sugar, water, corn syrup, a little bit of brown sugar, and we're letting that come up to a boil. And we're gonna add a little bit of salt because salt's gonna to help to accentuate the flavor of the pepita. And we're also adding in butter, all right? We wanna let that butter melt. And we're gonna put it back on the fire in order to melt. Now, after we've got this melted, we are definitely looking for a certain degree. Now, our temperature that we're looking for is 280 degrees. So, what you wanna do is you wanna have a candy thermometer that either can adhere to the side of the pot or one that can stand up on its own. I have a very old model, so generally I just hold on to it. But you wanna be careful if you're doing that because sugar is a very dangerous thing to work with. The sugar will stick to your skin and it'll hurt and it'll actually pull off the skin. So you really, really wanna be careful if you're messing around with this. The first temperature that we're looking for is 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Once we reach 280 degrees, we wanna go ahead and add in the pepitas. Now, you gotta be careful when you're doing this because you're still messing with the very hot sugar. So one of the things to remember is that you can actually use the thermometer as a stir, all right? You can't do that for all thermometers. Some of them that are more glass heavy, you wanna go ahead and remove them and use a nice wooden spoon for stirring them in. I have a heavy duty one that's metal, so that's why you're gonna see me actually using the thermometer to stir these in. We've got about a cup and a half of pepitas. We wanna add them in off of the heat. The main reason why we're adding them in off the heat is because they're going to have a tendency to fall, and when they fall through the sugar, that's when they can burn. And you also want to do it off the heat so that you can have a little bit more control over how they go in and no sugar is splattering up. Now that they're in, I'm going to stir them back onto the heat, and this is where we're looking for 305 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that we've reached 305 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to add in the baking soda, and we're going to stir it in and we can do that off the heat. Once you get the baking soda fully incorporated, then we're gonna put it onto our tray, and we're gonna put another piece of parchment on top. Now, I've already sprayed these uh, pieces of parchment with a little bit of Pam, but you need to remember to spray the part on the other piece that's gonna to touch the brittle. Now, just because that we have the parchment on top, you still need to be careful, because the sugar is still gonna retain a lot of heat. So you need to just be very gentle when you're working with it. Try not to rush. Try not to burn yourself, which is the most important thing. And you just want to get a nice, thin width to it. It's a good time to just walk away. Just let it cool down. Try not to touch it. Try not to play with it. And just come back to it in about 10 to 15 minutes. And then it should be cool enough to where we can break it and store it.